Welcome back to my channel for another reading. Today we're going to be talking about the Virgo full moon happening tonight. Um, pretty potent new moon. I'm going to give the astrological updates. Then we are going to pull uh, a collective card reading and see what we got what we got in store. It seems like from the pre-shuffle energies, it's going to be interesting as always. If you're not already, be sure to follow me over on Instagram for more updates, staying connected to me or be sure to check out my website, see how we can work one-on-one -on -one together, book a reading with me, all the things. Um, I'm not gonna dwell too much on the promo stuff. Today, let's talk about this full moon. So full moon in Virgo, I know I got a lot of Virgos on this channel following me. So the big thing, Virgo with the sun in Pisces and the moon in Virgo, it's all about releasing like perfectionism, especially if you know your rising sign and what house this falls into. Um, it's like releasing perfectionism, releasing that hypercritical energy and allowing yourself just to embody and feel into things like just to trust the universe. So it's like a big surrender, like release of control. So wherever this falls into your chart, especially if you're a Virgo sun, and this is aligning with your sun, it's definitely a release around expression, communication, all the things, you know, and then we have Jupiter opposing it, we have all these planets in Pisces, Jupiter, Neptune opposing this full moon, um, or in conjunction with this full moon. So it is like a little bit of a, um, there is a little bit of like a dreamy imaginative energy. There's a little bit of miscommunication leading up to it. It's like we're not seeing things clearly. We're not communicating things clearly. So it's kind of really emphasizing and pushing us to kind of dropping control, releasing control and just trusting in the universe because that like hyperactive Virgo energy wanting to like pick apart the details, um, wanting to know all the facts is just, we're not gonna get it right now, okay? So just, release control things aren't going to be seen clearly especially with that neptunian influence happening there in the sign of pisces and that jupiterian there's like that expansion around the more that you just lean into and trust the universe it's like things are unfolding so just trust have faith let's dive in to this reading the song you got on shuffle was ring ring so that phone is about to be ringing i don't know who's calling you but somebody's calling you okay ring ring um, your phone might be ringing off the hook. Let's get some, or, or it might be one specific person calling you. I don't know. Let's get some Oracle cards, see what is the Virgo full moon bringing in here. Okay. Um, we have happy endings and end of a chapter. We have remember who you are. So the beautiful thing about full moons is they're always like times of release. Then we have remember who you are. So this is kind of tapping back into your subconscious. This is exactly what I'm saying about just releasing and rooting back into you, especially with that Virgo hermit energy. Like now is the time to kind of rely on that inner wisdom versus that overthinking neurotic energy that you might be feeling. Um, and then we have your wishes coming true, celebrate your success. So like, let go, give it to God. Um, manifestations happening here. Like I said, that Jupiter influence, but the influence that success is going to come in, the wish fulfillment is going to come in when you release the control. So this full moon is all about release control, release perfectionism. It doesn't have to be perfect. That Virgo energy wants perfection, demands perfection, especially if you're somebody with a lot of Virgo placements in, but it's like, just let it go. Let go, let God, okay? Um, release the control. Let's get some Moonology cards here, please. Moonology, oh. We have, you and your loved ones are safe. New moon in Cancer. So again, releasing control. You're safe, you're supported. Big messages. We have bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. One more, please. Two more. It's time to release negativity and a personal issue reaches resolution. Um, full moon in Cancer. We have show the world the real you. So it does two Aquarius and two Cancerian energies here, by the way. So it does feel like you're releasing some kind of control aspect here. And like this could have to do with family because with the 
Two, cancer energies. You and your loved ones are safe. This could have to do with something in regards to home and family um, or just like your home life, like something on a personal level that might be affecting you publicly. Um, you kind of release, you let it go here. And this is about just embodying that energy of love and embodying that authenticity, like flaws and all, you know? Um, and that's kind of the theme of this full moon, as I've noted. So bottom of the deck energy, we have the two of swords. So it does feel like the tendency here is to sort of go inwards, go inwards for the answers. Um, very hermit energy with that Virgo, Virgo thing. It's like you have all the answers and wisdom. It's like when you start picking it apart, it's, it's finding that blend between like that Piscean, like intuitive energy and that Virgo, like using my wisdom and experience um to like using all my knowledge to bring me wisdom and guidance versus trying to like overthink it and overanalyze it and like trying to be perfect okay um it's like at some point you just have to go for it overall energy that this full moon is bringing in we have the three of cups so creativity expression i always see the three of cups as like an expression card Something that you've been bottling up might come out or vice versa. What is the Three of Cups doing here? What is the Three of Cups doing here, please? We have the Five of Cups. So it's interesting because in the traditional tarot with the Five of Cups here, um, Five of Cups can talk about like guilt, remorse, crying over spilt milk. Um, but the thing about that is like, especially in the traditional tarot, it's always the, th the Three Cups that are spilled over. So I really feel like there's something here that you're kind of, if you've been holding on to some kind of guilt, some kind of remorse in some setting, like you're, you're knocking those cups over, you're spilling the milk yourself, and you're just leaving it there to dry on its own. I'm going to get one more. Let's see. Why is the three of cups, five of cups here, please? Um, the two of cups, this could be in regards to a relationship, a partnership, um, and this might be somebody else towards you too. take it how it resonates like this might be somebody's energy towards you is like there's some kind of guilt and remorse here on not expressing or maybe there was some kind of third party situation I don't really like to bring those in but it could be like third party situations don't have to be you and another person it could definitely be like um you know having being emotionally invested in multiple things right but it feels like there's this regret here and there's this refocus on what's important which is this connection so let's dive in and see we have the high priestess piscean energy so again like i said the energy here is very internalized we have the star seed the fool card and we have the four of crystals so the high priestess and the four of pentacles is showing me this kind of, it feels like a standoff here. There feels like there's like a major standoff. Like you're kind of in waiting mode. You're relying on your intuition and just in observation mode. Whereas this person's kind of guarded and closed off. It's like there's something they're not letting go of. But with the star seed in the middle here, it looks like there's going to be a release here. Why is the high priestess here? Oh, that's too many cards. Too many. Um, why is the high priestess here, please? Why is the high priestess here? So maybe you could be getting psychic downloads. The high priestess does not want to talk. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Six of crystals in reverse and the strength card in reverse. Um, the strength card's the Leo card. So the fact that it's in reverse, that high priestess, she don't want to talk. So this could be your energy is like, you don't want to talk. Or somebody here does not want to talk. But that high priestess, especially with those two cards, it's like, I, I'm not giving anything. I'm going to sit here and just in my knowing and in my intuition, and I, I ain't given anything. So, okay, high priestess <laughs> doesn't want to talk there. Let's see, four of crystals here. What's the four of crystals doing here? Ah, uh, the Ace of Wands in reverse. So you're there's a standoff happening. 
there's some kind of standoff happening between you and I want to say another person because you're both in like a recoil mode. There's like recoiling happening. <laughs> um, let's see, give me another one for this one. And the Nine of Cups. Um, wish fulfillment, happiness, Nine of Cups there is kind of that outpouring of emotions. Uh, somebody might be reconnecting with that passion inside of themselves to help them release or let go of something. Uh, let's see. We have the hangman, the perspective, but it's in reverse. We have the eight of crystals here and we have the 10 of wands. Okay. So it's funny because we go from the standoff because I'm telling you that high priestess does not want to talk to me. And this one is, this energy is a little bit more open to talking. Um, maybe under like influence or something like that. This person's more of like, they're not wanting to let go of some kind of foundation they've built for themselves. And I feel like you're in an energy where you're like, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to communicate. I'm not going to express myself until you're ready to, um, open up. But we have the perspective here in reverse. So it looks like you're shifting out of this energy like you've changed your perspective. You're not waiting. You're not waiting. Um, you could be not waiting, working on yourself, but I feel like this 10 of wands here, whoever you're dealing with or whatever the situation here, it's like uh, dropping the burden, like something that they've been holding onto is getting a little too heavy to carry, a little too heavy to carry. So what's the perspective doing? What's the hangman doing here in reverse? What's the hangman doing in reverse? The king of cups. Um, this could be a decision, um, an emotional decision. It could be a decision in regards to love, especially this deck where he's like holding two cups, but looking at the one, um, making like an emotionally mature decision, whatever this is, but you're not waiting anymore. Maybe you are waiting things out, trying to make a decision, but you're not anymore. You're going with your gut. You're going with your instincts. Uh, the Eight of Pentacles here, it's talking about like the work, the effort, um, honing in on something, honing in on a skill, something that you've put effort into. It's like it's going to pay off for you. Why is the Ten of Wands here, please? Uh, Ace of Swords, Six of Wands and Ace of Swords. So um, confidence, clarity, some kind of victory, some kind of truth, some kind of communication here. Uh, major clarity. I think around this person's, it's too much of a, whatever they've been holding on to, whatever they've been not letting go of, um, out of fear, out of fear of like bursting their comfortable little bubble. It's like they're dropping, they're realizing it's getting like too heavy, too heavy. It's like they're trudging through the mud, you know, trying to keep up with you maybe. Um, especially if you've pulled back your energy. Now this person's having some kind of clarity and awakening, it seems. Ace of Crystals. Here's that offer. Ten of Swords. Okay. And the Knight of Cups. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Ace of Crystals. You have a golden opportunity com coming with this Ten of Swords. It's like shifting past any self-sabotage, any cycles of betrayal thoughts, releasing negativity, right? This is 100% you are releasing negativity. Um, and there's this opportunity that comes in. There's also this romantic offer, this proposal. Um, and I feel like this is from this person, like this person's not holding back anymore. And they're going to come through with like a, an offer. I'm not saying solid offer because it's the cups, water energy. Um, so it's more of like a proposal of sorts, whether you want to take that as like engagement or, you know, a business proposal, proposal being the keyword. Um, and I always make that really clear in my readings. Proposals are just like communicated, the ideas there. But the Ace of Crystals is kind of this solid opportunity. What is the Ace of Crystals doing here? The Knight of Wands. Um, I feel you ramping up speed, taking an opportunity towards whatever this Ace of Crystals is. 
I think that this is unrelated to whatever this is. We have the Page of Cups. This could be a message coming in. Um, I feel like that's that ring ring. What's that Page of Cups doing there? Three of Swords. Okay, so it could be an apology. There could be an apology coming in, coming towards you. Some kind of in and out energy. Let's see, Knight of Cups here. What's the Knight of Cups doing here? Two of Crystals. What's the Knight of Cups doing here? Knight of Crystals. Okay, so I lied. <laughs> I didn't see the full story yet. There is a solid offer coming in behind this proposal. And the Eight of Wands, it's coming in rather fast. So this could be travel, this could be fast communication, this could be that call I'm hearing. There could be some kind of apology here and something that's being offered to you that's way more solid because this person's had some kind of awakening, some kind of clarity. Again, we're all being, it's a collective reading, so we're all being influenced by this Virgo full moon. This person could have been holding on to like, things need to be in this precise manner. Things need to be this for me to be happy, for me to feel passion, for me to feel inspired. I don't want to risk my happiness. I'm comfortable. I'm content. But they're realizing like, actually, I can't stay like this forever. I have to change. I have to evolve. This is like they're having a wake up call. Like I can't strive for this perfection. Like things aren't always going to be perfect. I have to go towards my happiness and I have to make a conscious effort as well. Otherwise, people are going to move on from me. There's been a, a withdrawal of energy here. So let's see, before I move into the extended, which you can buy the single purchase on Vimeo, you can get access to all the extendeds on Vimeo, or you can check out my YouTube membership where you're going to get more bonus content, more live streams, opportunities to, um, you know, get readings from me. Let's see. Let's see about this phone call. Like, tell me about this phone call because I hear the ring ring. There's a phone call coming in. Six of Swords. It could actually be a message online. Um, the Emperor. Ooh, Aries energy. This could happen when we shift into Aries season, which I believe is this weekend. When's the 21st? Um, and the Moon card. Okay, so these three cards have the moon in it. So this full moon... Okay, this full moon, something's going down. The king of wands. Oh, this is a fire, fiery energy. If it's not a fire sign, they coming in really, they coming in hot, coming in hot. What is this person going to be saying? What is this person going to be saying? This could also be you taking action, manifesting shit with the magician, making shit happen. The tower card. Ooh, T. What's the tower doing here? The Eight of Cups. So something, something that gets blown up and forces you to kind of walk away from what's no longer serving you. Like part of the manifestation is like the foundation crumbling. The foundation that you think is so, or like the foundation that this person thinks has been so sturdy, it's come and fallen down. So what's the full moon bringing in for my collective? Knight of Swords and the World card, Clarity, Closure, the ending of a cycle. Um, cycles of boredom and trapping your, holding yourself back. I feel like you're no longer gonna be holding yourself back. And again, remember, this is a collective reading. So it's like, even whoever you're dealing with is gonna be influenced by this. Like no more holding, no more holding back. And I feel like since we're all feeling this energy, be prepared to kind of be on the receiving end, be on the giving end and receiving end of that, like of the no hold, no holding back type of thing. So that's what I'm seeing for you guys. I hope that this resonated. If you're interested in diving in deeper in the extended, I'm gonna pull some archetype cards. I'm gonna pull some from the different tarot deck. I'm gonna pull some message cards, some of the sexual tarot. So if you're interested in that, be sure to click the link in the description box and I will see you guys there.